الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد so last week we had the opportunity to discuss the responsibility of the Muslim toward other Muslims. Yet we were graced with the opportunity to have two experiences of sermon last week. So then after speaking about the responsibility of the Muslim toward other Muslims, we then expounded upon the responsibility of Muslims toward non-Muslims. Now as we take the next step, we would like to remain in the arena of Islam 101. Remain reflective. Yet introspective. We would like to offer Al-Fatiha. Mal fatiha وما أدراك ما الفاتحة الفاتحة What is الفاتحة And what would bring you into the space to properly perceive what الفاتحة is Well then firstly we must look at the name of this chapter of the Quran this first chapter of the Quran that is called the open but it is an opening to what? Why is it called that? Al-Fatiha is called Al-Fatiha for two reasons. Both of them obvious, one more obvious than the other. Al-Fatiha is called the opening because it is that which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has opened up his book with. Yet from a second perspective it is called Al-Fatiha because it is that which you open up your prayer with. And Fatiha is so relevant that you can't even pray without it. For if you do, your prayer isn't even valid. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated, La Salata, Liman Lam Yakra, Bi Fatiha Til Kitab. There is no prayer for the one who does not recite the opening of the book. Yet we find from the styles of our Lord and from the styles of the Qur'an that when there are 
chapters or, or, or verses that are more dear to Allah, the mighty, the majestic, as all of them are dear, you find them being given more than one name. So the Fatiha has only one of the names of this chapter. For it is called a salah It is called the prayer. It is called alhamd. It is called the praise. It is called a ruqya. It is called a spiritual healing because it can be utilized with the proper intention to heal the individual of spiritual ailments, physical ailments, emotional and mental ailments if one knows how to utilize it as such. For on an occasion when Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, utilized it for this reason and effectively healed another person, they came back and mentioned the story to the Prophet and he simply said to them, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ إِنَّهَا رُقْيَ And how did you know it can be utilized as a spiritual healing? It is called the kafia. It is called the sufficiency. Because it is sufficient from other than itself, but other than itself is not sufficient from it when it comes to the Qur'an. It is called Umm al-Qur'an. It is called Umm al-Kitab. It is called the mother of the Qur'an. It is called the mother of the book. For what is an um? What is a mother in this context? It is a marjah. It is a reference. It is that which other than it returns back to it. And this is what al-fatiha is. For al-fatiha encompasses all of the meanings of the Quran in entirety. Out of the 114 chapters, the succeeding 113 can all be found in al-fatiha in its meaning. While this is the case for Al-Fatiha, it is not the case for other than it. For other than it returns back to it. A chapter that is this comprehensive, perhaps it requires a bit more value than just utilizing it as a mechanical mechanism to simply get through a prayer. Perhaps there's more there that we are meant to be, we are meant to be gleaning from it to evolve us in our spirituality. So Allah states, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise belongs to Allah, Lord of all that exists. So then what is praise? Wasful mahmoob al kamal fi safateen. Mahabbatim wa ta'zeeba. Praise means that you are describing the one that is being praised with perfection in his attributes that causes one to love and extol him. The, the nature of the human being, in the general sense, is that we as a species are more inclined toward those things that are more complete, towards those things that are closer to perfection. The better something is, the more we have a tendency to like that particular thing. So then when we think about it in this fashion, and we may think about sports and lessons. People don't like the play that's on the bench. They like the player that plays well on the field because he's nearer to being a complete player. Yet when it comes to our Lord, to Barakul Ta'ala, who is more complete and perfect than him? If you understand, and the more you understand the reality of who your Lord is, the more you take time to enter into the names and the attributes of Allah, in contemplation and in practice in your life not just as a series of the and placing a name after it but making it a living thing in your life the more you do that the more you will understand who your Lord is the more you understand who your Lord is the more perfect you'll realize that he is and the more perfect you realize that he is you have no other choice but to love him more but to extol him more and if you are not, if you do not, then perhaps there is some deficiency with you in understanding the reality of who your Lord is. Maybe you need to enter into that space more. Not just thinking of a series of 99 names. The Magnificent, the All-Knowing, the All-Aware, 
what does that really mean and how do you practice it in your spirituality on a daily basis? Getting into that space. For once you open that chapter, you'll realize that there aren't only 99 names. God, you have to turn it closer to 300. Where are you in that conversation with yourself and your spirituality? So this is what praise is. All praise, he has rights over that. That's why he says, Lillah, that it belongs to him. And he is deserving of that praise. And it's left open like that. It's left open like that outside of yourself. And whatever may be going on in your life. Whether you like what is going on in your life or you do not like what is going on in your life, there's no stipulation mentioned here in advance you have. But rather, if things are going good for you in your life, Allah has the right to be praised. If things are going in a way in your life that you don't like, well, guess what? That doesn't negate the right that Allah has over you to still be praised. You still have to pray. You still have to fast. You still have to give charity. You still can't lie. You still shouldn't be doing drugs, whether that means you are ingesting them or selling them. Still, your Lord doesn't disappear because you have desires. He still has that right over you. Fellowship, brotherhood, sisterhood. These are acts of worship being near to the Quran, being near to the prophetic life. The Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu in his seerah Emulating that in your life This is your worship Being happy, being jovial Having good character This is from your worship And this is from your praise of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala Not being good merely for being good But offering that as an act of worship For the sake of Allah the mighty and the majestic So he can be pleased with you so that you can help yourself. So that you can allow your Lord to assist you. Allah doesn't change the state of a people until they change their own selves first. You've got to take the first, you've got to do something. Not just talk about it. Not just throw a few posts on Facebook and it makes you look nice. No. You got to live it. Islam is life. For Allah is our Rabb. He is the Lord. He is the creator, the provider, the giver of life, the cause of death. He disposes all the affairs of the universe in perfect harmony. It's called the sky is not falling down on top of us. He does that for all of us. For everything that exists. Those that believe in him and those that don't. He's still their Lord. And he still does all those things for them. Even if they are ungrateful. But you, the Muslim, the one that has submitted his or her will to Allah, you're meant to be grateful for all the blessings that he does for you. More so, and in the forefront of all humanity, before those who disbelieve in him, you believe in him, you got to act like you believe in him. From him being a rub, we understand his tarbiyah, we understand his cultivation. That he nurtures everything that exists. And if you contemplate upon your life, you will find how your Lord has nurtured you and nurtured all that is around you. So you're grateful for that. Grateful meaning that to utilize his blessings that he's given you to increase in obedience to him. That is gratitude. In gratitude, you take the blessing that he's given you and everything you have is a blessing. Everything we have is a blessing from him. That same blessing, you utilize it to disobey him with. That mouth you have, you disobey Allah with. Guess what? He gave you that as a gift. He can take it away. There are people that can't speak. Those ears you have, utilize them to obey him, yet you utilize your ears to disobey him and listen to things that he doesn't like. Likewise, your eyes. Likewise, what are you doing with your hands? What are you doing with your feet? What are you doing with your body? What are you doing with your private parts? Think about that. Think about that. And what are you doing to increase in obedience to Allah with all of that? The mind that he's given you. The skill sets that he's given you. The opportunities in life that he has given you. 
And you can always identify things that you have been blessed with that he has done for you that have not been done for others. Where are you inside of this mentality? This is the spiritual space that we must enter into. He is the Rabb, the Lord of the Alameen over all that exists. A Lord that is this power. A Lord that is this omniscient. A Lord that is this omnipotent. Is this a Lord that is vengeful, wrathful? Is this, a, is this an angry Lord? Or is this a Lord that is loving, a Lord that is merciful? And before we can almost even complete that question, our Lord answers it in the next verse. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the All-Merciful, the Bestower of Mercy. In a divine hadith, our Lord, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He has informed us, Inna rahmati gharabat ghadabi, that my mercy takes precedence over my anger. Does He anger? Yes. But His mercy takes precedence over that. So will you take the opportunity to enjoy in his mercy? Or will you forego his mercy out of your own choice and enter into his anger? The choice is yours. Malik al-Madin. He is the Malik and the Malik. He is the owner and the king of the day of Deen. But Deen here doesn't mean religion. Deen here means jaza. It means recompense. He is the owner and the king of the day of recompense of the last day. The day of resurrection. That day that will be 50,000 years long. And we will be standing for that long on that day. You will be held to account for all that you say and all that you do. What will your responses be to your Lord for the things that you have said? For the things that you have done in your life? Don't think because people forgot about it that it's not going to come back when you're in front of your Lord. Don't think because you forgot about it that it's not going to bounce back. You have to account for that. So when you are speaking with whatever words that you are speaking and you are doing whatever actions that you are performing, are you even thinking about how you're going to respond to your Lord for what you are saying and doing? One of the scholars of our faith that lived in the medieval period of Islam, Ibn Nikik al Eid, he had a fantastic statement when he said, I have never uttered a word. I have neither uttered a word, nor have I performed an action, except that I have already prepared a response for it in front of Allah, the mighty and the majestic. May Allah allow us to enter into that space. So I say these words of mine And I seek forgiveness for myself as well as for you all So seek his forgiveness Certainly he is all forgiving Most merciful Alhamdulillah <laughs> wahda Yet Allah continues. You alone do we worship. And you alone do we seek aid. We have worship here be mentioned in general. And then it be mentioned again by after that in specific. Worship in isti'ana. Seeking aid of Allah. This is an act of worship. This is from the stars of the Qur'an that Allah does. It's meant something in general and then again in specific. We'll offer you something that you already know. Surah Ta'asr. Except for those who have iman, faith, and then perform righteous actions. Righteous actions are a part of your faith, an integral part. It's already mentioned by just saying faith. But then he says righteous actions right after that to specify. That's what's going on here in Al-Fatiha. You alone do you worship? General. And you alone do we seek aid? Specific act of worship. But why this one in particular? How many acts of worship are there that exist? Well, there's, there's fasting and there's, there's, there's highs of the pilgrimage to Mecca as they just completed. And there, 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 there's prayer and there, there's giving charity and there's recitation of the, the Quran and there's, there, there's giving gifts and there's love inside of your heart for Allah and His sake. And there's fear and there's hope and there's you're placing your trust in many acts of worship. Why this one in specific is being mentioned? Why that? Well, then when we, un- when we unpack it, 
we have to reach the conclusion that it is not possible for you to perform any act, be it an act of worship or other than that, except that Allah assisted you in that. You don't wake up in the morning unless Allah helped you to wake up. You have no money in your pocket unless Allah helped you to get that money. You're not walking unless Allah aided you to walk. You don't have that fancy job or that nice business or whatever it is that you are doing, that beautiful wife or that beautiful husband. You don't have any of that, that education. Allah helped you to do that. That prayer that you made, Allah helped you to pray. <laughs> Evidence of that, how many people are not praying today? But he helped you to pray. You give charity, he helped you. You read the Quran, he helped you. There is no act of worship that exists except that it will fall under the umbrella of seeking the aid of Allah. So for this reason, he mentions the act of worship seeking aid so that it can encompass all acts of worship in entirety. And this would not have been the case if he specified any act of worship other than this. Then we get to the core of the chapter, the climax as it were. اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطُ mustaqim. We ask Allah to guide us to the straight path. Firstly, we're asking guidance for us, not for me or you or I as an individual. Our Lord is teaching us that we're meant to want God, we're meant to want guidance for everyone and all people, in all spaces, in all times. The people that you like and the people you don't like. Imagine that. You're supposed to want guidance for them too. The people that are Muslims and the people that are not Muslims. The people that are your allies and the people that are your enemies. Even if you don't have a good personal relationship with said person, you are still supposed to have it in your heart because of your belief that you still want Allah to guide you. Throughout the history of Islam, how many enemies of Islam were there that embraced the faith and were from the greatest supporters of the faith. Going back to the time of the companions. Oh Lord, may Allah be pleased with him. Embrace Islam on his way to kill the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Are you better than that? We're meant to want guidance for everyone. General guidance and specific guidance. Being generally aware of Islam, of our belief, of our conduct, our character, our laws, and in the detail sense as well. Knowing what is right and doing what is right. Being informed of what is right and your Lord granting you success and guiding you so that you actually do what is right in your life. To the straight path, that straight, wide, long path that leads directly to Allah in His paradise. That straight path that it is beneficial knowledge and righteous action together. That straight path that is Islam. That straight path that is the Quran. That straight path that is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what we are asking Allah to guide us to and upon. Meaning that if you have not been guided to it, you're asking your Lord to be guided to it. And if you've already been guided to it, you're asking your Lord that He continues you upon that path. Because your continuity is not necessarily promised, it can be taken away. So you have to make dua to your Lord for it and depend upon Him for that. Do you know there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that mentions that Allah is angry with the person who doesn't make dua to Him? That you're so arrogant that you can't even ask your Lord as though you don't need Him? For whatever it is, big or small. So then how are you functioning in your life throughout your day and your night? This supplication, then it becomes specific. The path of those on whom you have bestowed your grace. So we want to be upon the straight path, but we also want to traverse it in such a way that it emulates the people that have done it successfully before us. We utilize them as an example because they did it and they got it right. You don't have to recreate the wheel. You're not in the dark. Islam provides you a spectrum of color. You have a lot of space to move if you will only enter into the space. So who are these people that Allah has graced them that have traversed the past successfully? We learn this from Surah Tunisa. 
وبيتيع الله الرسول فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليه من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا Whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger then those people will be in the company of the people that Allah has bestowed His grace upon them bestowed His grace upon them where? In Al-Fatiha from the prophets the truthful the martyrs and the righteous these are those that we look to emulate who will traverse the path before us our predecessors this is how that works we understand where we came from so that we know where we are going so if you are disconnected from where you came from Islamically then you cannot have a proper trajectory moving forward it's not possible these individuals Allah states Hasuna ulaika rafiqa. What a superb companionship they ought to have. Then, after being specific about what we do want, our Lord teaches us to be specific about what we don't want. Neither rather those who have earned your anger, nor rather those that have gone astray. And you have all seen the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, in which the companions asked about who are those that earn this anger who are those that go astray and they asked the Prophet وسلم, are they the Jews and the Christians he states for men who else but what we need to understand here this doesn't mean a person of the Judeo-Christian faith just because they happen to be from the Judeo-Christian faith and it doesn't mean all of them in totality in the ad infinitum sense it's because of characteristics that are present so what characteristics do they possess that place them in that space? Those who earn the law's anger, they have knowledge, but they don't act in accordance with the knowledge that they possess. While this, must, while this may be customary of those of Jewish faith, although not inclusive of all of them, it's also not limited to those of Jewish faith. Meaning what? If you are a Muslim and you have knowledge of the truth, and you're not acting in accordance with the knowledge of Islam that you have, regardless of how great or how little, you can earn Allah's anger. You're not excluded. That's what al fatiha is telling us. Those that have gone astray, those that are misguided, those who are of the Christian faith, not in totality, but because of characteristics. What characteristics? That they act and they worship. And they do worship. Sometimes we get an earshot of them if we catch them on the right day from here. But they are worshiping premised upon ignorance, not premised upon knowledge, not premised upon revelation from Allah. That's the characteristic. So then you as a Muslim, if you live your Islam upon ignorance, and you just worship however you feel like worshiping or just because someone said something or was just passed down in your generations or because that's just the atmosphere that you happen to have come from whatever that atmosphere may have been be it a city atmosphere be it the academic atmosphere in universities with your MSUs, right? your, 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 Muslim, your Muslim student uh, associations and such, be it the, the prison atmosphere, all these places have their cultures where Muslims are. But if that is your only premise, and your premise is not Quran, is not Sunnah, is not Revelation, then what do you think that you are worshiping along with other than ignorance? And then what makes you different from these people that have this quality? And what is it that makes you not misguided? You see, there is space for everyone inside of al fatiha And it can be utilized as a means of guidance in your daily life if you would only choose to do so. We learn the proper categories of Tawheed. We learn the proper categories of monotheism. We learn the attributes of our Lord and his importance and how to utilize them to build a relationship with our Lord. We learn the etiquette of dua. We learn the etiquette of supplication. We learn the different types of human beings that exist and how to categorize them so that we can then mirror ourselves to it, compare ourselves to it, and see where we need to be to the end of the benefits that are inside of a from spiritually healing and physically healing to other than it. But is anyone listening today? Well, Kim Salah.